Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we've got thoughts on NBA All-Star Weekend. Tiffany's getting real cute with their Air Force One drop. Adidas thinking we care who's back in Yeezys, the week's hottest releases, and of course, our Hard Pass. All right, let's start with some hot takes. Tiffany's has revealed their release procedure for the upcoming Air Force One collab. Because they can't just say, yo, sign up for the raffle on March 3rd and we'll let you know on the 6th if you won, for some reason they have to gentrify it. So instead they are encouraging clients to enroll via a link that will drop on Tiffany's socials on the 3rd. They will receive an email about their enrollment outcome on the 6th. It's like trying to get into a prestigious school whose colors are croc skin black, chrome silver, and aqua blue. Too bad the dean isn't involved, I guess. Could you imagine if sneakers was this pretentious when you took an L? Well, I'm sorry, old chap, but I do believe it's not going to work out for you this time. Now, run along and take this L with you. Good day, sir or madam hype beast. You can all thank Billie Eilish for bringing back the Nike Air Alpha Force One, one of the few non-Air Jordans that Michael Jordan wore in the NBA. Ah, I'm just kidding. But man, people were not happy when this was revealed to be a collab, especially when every sneaker IG account was piling on and trolling their audience for engagement. See, if most of these angry sneakerheads were on their game, they would have known that late last year, it was already being reported that the Alpha Force was coming back in 2023. There's even images of the retro without the Billie Eilish branding. For reasons unexplained as of right now, it looks like we might be getting two Air Alpha Forces in the colorway MJ wore. One with Billie Eilish's branding and one without. But you already knew that, right? If you were the MJ fan that you claim to be, you'd have been excited for the Alpha Force to come back like you were excited for the airships to come back. This Billie Eilish thing shouldn't even be on your radar. Come on, Jordan fans. His birthday was just this week. You're all better than that. By the way, I love the mental gymnastics of some of the comments. Well, Billie's shoes don't sell because no one likes her, so now they're going to attach her name to this retro that no one was talking about because she's a celebrity who can't sell shoes. Wait, make it make it make sense, fellas. So there was a rumor last week that Adidas might be looking to strike a deal to bring back Kanye. Nah, don't do it, people in charge at Adidas. That's the second dumbest thing that they could do. The first dumbest thing that they could do is destroy those Yeezys instead of repurposing them or just selling them as is. To borrow a friend of the program, Brendan Dunn's sake, a company that is allegedly as committed to the environment and sustainability, simply burning 500 million euros worth of Yeezys or any product really is a bad look. It's like when you see bakeries and restaurants just dump unsold food in the trash instead of sending them to shelters or food banks or discount grocery stores. I, I know I shouldn't be comparing Yeezys to food. At least the food actually serves a purpose to society. According to reviews on the internet, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, is the worst MCU movie since The Eternals. Damn. I guess we're ignoring actual crap like Iron Man 2, Thor Dark World, and Captain Marvel. Like, come on, Quantumania gave us Kang the mother Conqueror. As a kickoff to the Kang Dynasty and eventually Secret Wars, we here at Hard Pass love that part of Quantumania. Now, the part where it was an Ant-Man movie? Yeah, not so hot, but... Not So Hot is still a hell of a lot better than the mess that was The Eternals. And really, isn't this what the people wanted? Oh, there's no stakes in the Ant-Man movies. Who cares about the small time stuff that Scott Lang does, blah, blah, blah. So Marvel said, okay, fine. Here's the mother Kang. And now the fans are like, oh, where's the fun and goofy Ant-Man, blah, blah, blah. The lesson, as always, like what you like and then log off the internet. Anyway. Uh, with All-Star Weekend going down this past weekend in Utah, yours truly was there for stuff that's totally unrelated to the NBA signature event, but still, I felt the energy of the weekend, but mostly it was just really, really cold, man. And Co-Rider hates me right now because I kind of brought the cold back with me to Los Angeles. On the plus side, I got to wear J's in the stove. I I I'm not sure how that's a plus. Anyway, here's some quick thoughts on All-Star 2023. Congratulations to Anthony Edwards for making his first NBA All-Star appearance this past weekend. As an Adidas athlete, he received a red, black, and silver colorway of the boost you wear select for the game. And wait, wait, wasn't that supposed to be an Ant-Man colorway? Damn, that's two Ant-Men that deserved better on Sunday. 
So you know how it was a big deal when LeBron James passed Michael Jordan and then the late Kobe Bryant on the all-time scoring list? Like, I actually remembered when they happened. LeBron got a standing ovation. He waved to the crowd, yada, yada, yada. Those moments got a lot of coverage from the fans, the media, and the league, culminating, of course, with LeBron passing Kareem a few weeks ago. But you notice, nobody gave a shit when he passed Karl Malone, who was at the time second on the all-time list. Like, you think they even invite Carl to the little thing that they did at halftime with LeBron and Kareem if it wasn't in Utah? Like, probably not, right? Okay, so there are years when Magic Johnson says the dunk contest is back, and I just look at him like, man, I'm so happy you won us five championships. He can say whatever, no matter how benign or obvious or unself-aware they are. And then there are years like this one when Matt McClung actually lived up to his early days as an Instagram sensation and won the dunk contest, even though he just signed a two-way deal with Philly days before the event and has only suited up for their G League team. As long as Magic keeps saying it, he's going to be right eventually. Time is a flat circle and whatnot. You know that. Uh, since we're doing this all-star segment, this gives me the chance to break out co-riders' hottest all-star take. LeBron was right to never join the dunk contest. It's downward cowardly, I know, but co-writer believes LeBron made the smart business decision. Why? Because he's not that good of a gimmick dunker. In game dunker, one of the best. Like, if the contest was, let's see how hard you can dunk over Aaron Baines or Brandon Knight, LeBron would win hands down. But mascots, jersey switches, props, LeBron ain't doing that. Superstars typically do the dunk contest early in their careers. See Jordan, Kobe, and Vince. So if LeBron had done the dunk contest in the same time frame as his peers, he would have had to done it between 2004 to, let's just be generous and say 2010, because he pumped fake everybody in 2009 when he conditionally injured himself to the following year's events. Let's take a look at the guys who won those years. LeBron wasn't beating Gerald Green or Josh Smith. He wasn't beating Dwight Howard in 2008 when people actually liked Dwight. So his best shot would have been in 2004 on one of the Nate Robinson years. The excitement in 2004 would have been so strong, Magic would have been saying the dunk contest never left. So LeBron probably takes it on hype alone. And the judges probably would have rigged one for Nate against LeBron like they did for MJ in 88. Hashtag justice for Dominique. And just for the sake of argument, if LeBron did join in 2011, he ain't beaten Blake Griffin jumping over a Kia official car of the NBA. So yeah. LeBron would rather have you all thinking what if forever instead of dunking and losing to Nate Robinson and be a forever meme. He probably did the right thing as much as we hate to say it. So let's see, what, what else happened? Um, Jordan Brand revealed the Jordan Tatum one last week and surprise, it's the same pair that was leaked a few weeks ago. Tatum denied that these were his signature shoes. Man, that's not a hot start, JT. Not a hard start at all. Although the all-star MVP does help. I get, look, man, I'm not even mad. I'm just disappointed, that's all. And no, I'm not talking about the shoes. You didn't have to lie. First the Fat Boys, then co-writer taking a second job with Shaq, and now this is more than a man could take. But finally, guess we're not gonna talk about Paul George wearing the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro Grinch, even though he has a signature shoe that's still being sold in stores as we speak. Yeah, we're totally not gonna talk about that even though we kind of knew writing was on the wall about a year ago and we've been making jokes about it ever since. But do we forget anything? Oh, right, Kyrie and Jalen. Nah, I think they deserve their own segment, which we'll get to in just a little bit. All right, it's time for the heat check. We bring you everything that's dropping this week. Shout out to Sasuke, a character from Naruto, and it's spelled S-A-U-C-E-K-A-Y. Kidding, kidding, but Naruto is an anime neither I nor Cool Rider have ever watched because there's like thousands of anime out there. We're While we're into like big blockbuster shows like Dragon Ball and Attack on Titan, we're really all about the slice of life stuff like Polar Bear Cafe or Azumanga Daio or that one that everybody hates, but I think they're just not getting the stylistic choice of Netflix's Way of the House Husband. Why am I pointing this out? No reason, none whatsoever. Co Rider absolutely doesn't have a petty vendetta against the people in the comments and felt the need to point out his anime bona fides. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, we have the Woman's Nike Dunk High Alabaster on the 28th for 140. We have Fila Rocco's Modern Life Pack that's going to drop on the 28th. We have Kiko Kostadinov 
uh, his A6 gel quantum Zant Zia on the 28th. We have undefeated Nike Air Force One Fauna Brown on the first for 160. The women's Nike Dunk Low Sandrift on the first for 110. Women's Laquan Smith Puma RSX on the third for 120. The women's Air Jordan 14 Metallic Silver that's on the same day for 180. LeBron James's Nike Air Max One Liverpool on the fourth for 180, and the Air Jordan 5 UNC on the fourth as well for 225. Then. Our pick of the week is the Adidas Harden Volume 7 Silver Metallic and Better Scarlet on the second for 160 each. Full stop, this is the best Harden signature entry in a long time. Is that going to be a consistent opinion? Probably not, but oh well. I feel like Adidas had something going on with the debut model Harden Volume 1 and that it was aiming for something a little more high fashion. And if that wasn't the goal, and I should probably know what was the goal since I was there at the reveal several years ago, I saw it as a genuine attempt to make a basketball sneaker that could work well on and off the court. You used to hear that from a lot of signature athletes in the early 2010s, and you would just nod in agreement even if you knew it was just lip service. Anyways, when I first saw the Volume 7, they looked like a luxury brand's interpretation of a basketball shoe. And then I saw the three stripes, and I was even more impressed. Is this the long-awaited breakthrough that Adidas basketball has been hoping for? Well, time will tell, but I would have certainly tapped a Prada or Gucci for a collab with these to get some energy behind them. And that's energy spelled N-R-G, like Nike does. Anyway, uh, it's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like the Hard Pass staff trying to figure out what the end game is with Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown. The former Boston Celtics teammates made headlines during All-Star Weekend for not just their play during the annual showcase, but for what was on their feet. For Kai, it was a continuation of wearing old Nike Kyrie signature shoes with the swoosh covered up. For Jalen, it was a customized pair of Kobe 5 Pro Trolls with the word liberation and the mocking slogan, just do better. As you might expect, the reaction to the sneaker online was mixed. Kyrie fans were firmly behind their guy and his cause, while his detractors were quick to point out the hypocrisy, fair or not, of protesting Nike while continuing to wear Nike. The reaction was similar for Brown, with some pointing out that when he entered the sneaker-free agency last season, he wore Kobe's at a regular clip, including custom versions of the undefeated Hall of Fame Kobe 5s during the NBA Finals. Between Kai, Jalen, and Enos Cantor when he was on the Celtics, what is it with Boston and Boston-adjacent players? Yes, that was an unprovoked shot from a Laker fan. I apologize. But do I mean it, though? Anyways, we've talked about Kyrie's journey both in and out of sneakers for much of last year, and Jalen's sneaker-free agency is worth keeping a close eye on. But man, we just want to fast forward to the part where they both have sneaker deals already. Like, it's exhausting having to wonder how Kai is going to cover up his Kyrie 3s this week or what statement Jalen is going to make that may or may not still be influenced by Kyrie. But why the rush, Jacques? Well, because we need to know if both of them are really truly serious people with opinions that should be taken seriously. Kai talks about being free quite a bit. I can respect that. He stood up to Nike when the design of the shoe we now know as the Kyrie Infinity wasn't up to his expectations. He was already on the way out with the swoosh before the events of the past several months and he didn't seem to have a problem with that. Jalen split with Adidas in 2021 and while he reportedly has had conversation with several brands about becoming a signature shoe athlete, the brands don't seem to be interested in following brands' desire to be more than a signature shoe athlete. And that's why he remains in a sneaker-free agency. I can respect that too. Jalen, don't settle and get what you feel your worth is. It doesn't explain why he mostly wears Kobe's and then protests Nike in Kobe's, but do you, I guess. But this has to end with them starting their own sneaker brand, right? It can't really go any other way. We've said it before, but Kai is unabashedly black. He is super online and that's really gotten him in a lot of self-inflicted entanglements, but there is no doubt that he supports black causes and black businesses. A Kyrie brand a la what Stefan Marbury did years ago or what Langston Galloway is doing right now with ethics is the only path forward for Kai. A lateral move to an Under Armour or a Puma or a Li Ning or Anta where he becomes the face of another billion dollar sneaker company will only end in headaches on both sides. Also, the idea of Kyrie working with a Chinese brand is so unbelievable even by Kyrie standards. As for Jalen, he won't take as much heat as Kai if, say, tomorrow he announced a deal with New Balance. There would still be a lot of questions as to why he chose to go to a big brand instead of striking out on his own, but he can hand wave a lot of it off by saying New Balance's values align with his and that they are willing to assist in whatever activist causes he might pursue off the court. He should 
probably get a question or two about what makes New Balance so different from Nike since you know there isn't a major sneaker brand in the world that doesn't face accusations of child labor. But like Kai, I'm hoping for the start of a new black owned sneaker brand altogether for Jalen. The best possible outcome also leads to the least amount of headaches and drama. Hmm, who would have thought? All right, that's gonna do it for the show today. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I'm Jacques Slade, I'll see you next week. If you would like to possibly be featured in a future episode, uh, call us, 818-493-9325. Leave a short message or social media if you want, no more than 30 seconds. All right, I'll see you next week. Peace.